growing calls across the nation to defund the police. To end policing as we know it. Off the charts violence in New York City. 11 people shot in just eight hours on Sunday. This is Sunday. about the police officers, officers who every single day put on that uniform and they run towards danger when we run away from it. Oh, God's up. Giddy up, y'all. There she is. She didn't unmute it tonight. Guys, welcome to Failure to Stop Night Shift, the show that's all about true crime. I'm excited. Oh, looks like you've dressed a little bit more modestly this week, Andrea. Looks like you've cleaned it up a little bit. Decided to I mean, uh, get rid of the old rebel flag bikini and throw up something a little bit more tasteful, did you? Yeah. I mean, we have been trying our best to adhere to all the the standards and the, the you know, the regulations of YouTube and just generally our public, right? That mm -hmm. we want to portray a good, our best selves. Yes. So, got the shoulders covered. Um we, we just, it's one thing we're not going to have to worry about. You know what I mean? Turtleneck? Yeah. Like, definitely didn't have to go to Goodwill to get this <laughs> today. <laughs> now, let me ask you. I know I made a joke about a uh, rebel flag bikini, but you're from the South. <laughs> you're a Nashville, Tennessee girl. You, uh -huh. you had one at one time, didn't you? I'm, I'm just guessing. That <clears> you did. <throat> did you ever have uh -huh. a rebel flag bikini? Uh huh. Be honest. Don't uh -huh. ever lie. Don't lie to the Wolfpack. You did. <laughs> okay. I knew you did. I can tell by your accent. Such Everybody a knows. Horrible. Like, not the, not the, not the idea of the bikini itself. Just picturing me wearing it at a concert with Gene Shorts. <laughs> <laughs> what concert was it? Kid Rock. Was it a Kid Rock concert? This was before Kid Rock. Oh, what was it? What concert did you wear? Eric Tansy. <laughs> But it had to be like you can't wear a rebel flag bikini to any other concert except either Kid Rock or Leonard Skinner. <laughs> Maybe Garth Brooks. So much. Maybe no, Garth Brooks. I, I dress much more tastefully at Garth, all right? Both times. Yeah. It was it was Skinner, right. man. It was Skinner. I knew it, dude. I'm a freaking legend. I should be a detective, a true crime. I want to tell you guys how long ago this was to make it sound a little better, but then you know how old I am and that makes everything sound worse. <laughs> 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 oh man well hey i'm happy to be here tonight guys we got so many people in the live chat already tonight craig craigers deleski dropping some money uncle whiskey 68 dropping some boons uh sarah kelch wanting me to sing sarah you want me to sing girl i'll sing for you it's not gonna be right now but i'll sing i'll sing before the end of this show uh today's show is brought to you by ghost bed using that promo code Wolfpack, but a uh, little housekeeping real quick, and then we're going to dive into some real true crime tonight. We've got a meetup. We're going to meet the fans. Uh, when are we meeting yeah. the fans? Uh, Friday, August 26th, guys, so <clears throat> a little over a week and a half at Rocco's Cigar Bar in Wilmington at yeah, 7. It's a free meetup. Free meetup, Rocco's Cigar Bar, Wilmington, North Carolina. We'll be there from 7 till, I don't know, 9 or 10, I'd reckon. Um, I don't know what time grandma here goes to bed, but uh, I'm I'm up to rage. Uh, that's gonna be that's gonna be a Friday. It's a Friday Friday night. So correct. Come on out, have a good time, try some of my rum. I'll have my rum in the house. Have a cigar, shoot some pull, throw some darts, grab some pictures. Uh, but we can't wait to hang out with a couple of, of you guys from uh, the night shift. So other than that, uh, the Andrea Uplate merch is up on on uh, on the site. It's looking real nice. You can also use that promo mm, code. They're starting to um, make me a sandwich. It's the promo code. I had them. I had to make the it promo actually code is, yesterday. Well, Fifteen percent really off. Is. Make me oh, a sandwich. Make get me Fifteen percent off on this. Really good. Other than that, man, uh, how are you doing? Everything going good on your end? Yeah, going good. Just uh, been working and you know all the all the real fun stuff. Grocery shopping and mopping and. Yeah, as long as you're as long as you're wearing that turtleneck, covering up that modesty. It's, uh, it's actually because... floor. It's floor length. It goes good. All good. I don't want to see. I don't want to see any of your skin. I don't. I don't want to see any of it. I think we should work our way to a burka, but um, 
We'll see. Also, oh, by the way, if you go and follow Andrea Uplate, real quick, I'm sorry, I'm trying to get through all this. If you go and follow at Andrea Uplate on Instagram, we get her to a thousand followers. It's a new Instagram account for her. Uh, if you get old grandma Andrea up to a thousand, she's going to call me master on the next show. I think she's right up at about what, 800, 900? Closing around 900? Something like that. Yeah. Like um, that. I, mean, it's going up quickly, I just need. But- I need everyone to know this was nothing that I agreed to. Um, no consent was had here. Uh, I don't need consent. It's kind of a big right. deal when you're a celebrity. You don't need consent. Everybody knows that. Uh, talk to Bill Clinton. Talk to the Epstein. Talk to anybody. If uh, if you're famous enough. Um, what, what's the other guy? Deshaun Watson? Did he have yep. uh, consent? Did he have consent? Yep, yep. I don't think so. I did not. And <clears throat> my turtleneck smells a little bit like chloroform. <laughs> That's because you bought it at Goodwill. <laughs> Somebody was probably murdered in that that thing. Did you even wash it first for for next week's crime show on Tuesday? <laughs> the origins of my turtleneck. <laughs> I can't. Well, one. Yes, did I washed you wash it. it? Yes, I washed it. I just, I just mm. that's what I was trying to say during sound check. It's still like damp from the dryer. <laughs> it's like not Girl. super. This isn't my most comfortable moment right now. I'll just uh, I'll bleed blue 1967 says, Hey guys, Mike did not ruin our engagement. I am officially engaged. Uh, g- congratulations. For those of you who don't know, who didn't listen to Friday's show, which was awesome. Uh, Mike, the cop actually accidentally outed uh, bleed blue 1967. And uh, while number. they were driving to get engaged, he spilled the beans that they were going to get engaged. Luckily uh, bleed blue 1967 was late to the chats. And so they missed it all together. Another shout out to Shannon. She was a fan that came and saw me a few weeks ago. Told her I'd give her a shout out on a night shift. So here we go. Also, of course, we've got the old faithful that James, one of our fans, brought me a nice little K-bar. A little bit psychotic there, a little psycho. But it made sense because uh, he's a Marine and he brought me a Marine Corps daddy shirt, to be funny. So it's not as psycho. But if somebody just brought me like a like a kill people knife and just randomly brought it to me, I would have questions. But all right, let's go. Let's do some true crime. I've been yabbering on for so long. Uh, I'm ready. I'm ready to hear some true crime for once. You're dressed modestly. I can actually pay attention. I'm not being distracted by the skin of your shoulders. And I'm ready to learn. What do we got? Yeah, so <clears throat> I teased it a little bit yesterday on Instagram, guys. But that new documentary is out on Netflix now. and actually just dropped, I think, on the 9th, just a week ago. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, called I Just Killed My Dad. It's called that because those are the first words that Anthony Templet, you'll notice his name is um, T-E-M-P-L-E-T. They're from Baton Rouge, though, so it's uh, Templet. Um, when he called 911 to confess to murdering his father, that's the first thing that he said. Um, so that that is the title of the documentary. Because of that... <clears throat> like usually looking into something like this, it'll either be a case that I'm just kind of interested in, or it's an old kind of famous one or new uncovering, whatever this, we, we know how this case ends very clearly. Um, what we're going to talk about is maybe how it got there. But um, since this has just aired, it didn't make a ton of news when it happened. I mean, kind of locally around Texas and Louisiana um, where both of where a few different family members were from, but that was kind of it. It wasn't big coverage. So I don't, I would usually kind of be listen to some podcasts on some things, watch some things, and then do a lot and lot of reading before a show. And there's just not a lot. You're reading the same things from all the same news articles because that's about all we've got. Um, So for those of you that showed up in the chats today or on the Instagram post saying that they've either already seen the documentary and thought it was wild, I agree. And some of you are going to go back and watch it after the show. Um, so I hope you enjoy it, but it's um, it's it's something. Why do you say so? You said that like it made the news, but it what like it? I mean, it didn't really make the news. It didn't. Make, why? Why do some murders? Do you think make it all the way to Netflix? Even though like, do you think that Netflix goes after murders that nobody's heard of and then puts it on there? But like, why? Why wouldn't it be some more high, more high profile murder? Right. I, th- I think in this one, there's a couple of reasons. <clears throat> I think that at the end of the day, most people are going to come to the same, to the same opinion on not, not across the board, but I think the majority of people have come to the same opinion on um, the verdict that was had um, when, when Anthony was tried and how we'll talk about the outcome of that. Uh, I think most people seem to agree. There will be some that don't, 
But I think that another reason it probably made it to Netflix, I think that maybe stepmom had a little something to do with that. I think she was reaching out to mm. some um, to some media. Now, I don't do any research before your shows. Um, I do all my research for Friday show and Thursday show. I usually you just take the reins. So I know nothing mm -hmm. about this case. However, I do handle all the pictures to make sure that they're presented up on here. I actually I don't know if the woman you're talking about is is the one that that uploaded it to Netflix it's or gave me an idea you, that you didn't like. But um, just from the picture, her name was Susan. Mm -hmm. I label I titled the picture for my notes as Susan B. Cunt. I, know. She, I don't know her last name, but she <laughs> looks like a Susan B. Cunt to me. Is that the same girl that probably uploaded this to YouTube? Sometimes you can just tell. You can look at a chick and you go, you know, she's it's, a real bitch. It's hard to tell. I mean, she's um, – we're going to talk about a lot of this. Is this her right here? Is this her? Yes. God bless. She. I mean, th that, That's the nicest picture I could find of her. Other than that, she, she's, a ve she's very Carol baskin -y to me looking. I don't know um, anything about her. Maybe I'm way wrong. Really, really, really skinny legs. That's odd when you see, like, if you, did you see the whole picture before you put, like, the top half up? I don't know. No. Is it interesting? Um, she, we're going to talk about, when you say that about her, it, it'll be interesting to see people's reactions to the different um, family members in this story, because it's kind of what we've talked about before about, like, um, being on the outside, Right? right. And making a blanket statement or a big judgment about something without really knowing everything or everything that's involved in that. So there are a lot, a lot of times where I really can say a lot of just real big, I would have never done that statements. I can't imagine how anybody would have done that. And then there is some psychology behind some of this. There's going to be long patterns of um, just genetic patterns or family history patterns of um, bad, bad things happening. And so so we'll see. We'll kind of talk about, you know, your opinion of her when it's all said and done. I, right. mean, I kind of have mine, but, and this is a story guys too. I would really enjoy, I know we kind of, after a Tuesday night show, we kind of joke sometimes the next day if stuff went on, but I definitely want to hear some, um, I want to hear some input. Like once you guys hear this, if you go back and read into it some more yourselves, like I do want to hear, you know, what you're thinking about this and what you, you know, what you've kind of, your conclusion that you've come to. For sure. Yeah, slide up into her DMs, you know, um, tell her what you think about the case, leave her a D pick, um, you know, all the things. Just you can right also just DMs. comment on the post that I put up today. So I'll check that too. Oh, did I put a post? Did you put a post up? Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't see it yesterday or today of the, um, of just of Anthony's face is the first picture. You get any, do people send you dick pics in your DM? How many <laughs> dick pics do you get a week? From, the, from no no I don't get them. Oh, you don't. Thank God y'all don't do that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if she gets to a thousand, unleash the gates. Send her as many dick pics as you can. I hate you so much. Drinking Bros did a contest one time um, to, for their new publicist to rate to see who had the best dick, and they got them to send all their dick pics to the new publicist. <laughs> And her inbox was full of like, I, 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 she showed them to me. She she sat there and showed me just the dick pics after dick pics that, that drinking pros had DM'd her. I felt so bad. Oh, oh. We got, we got, um, can you, Kaosu, Kaosu, it's you again. Can you maybe God. type out phonetically like how we say your name? Or can I call you K? But thank you for the $20 and thank you for listening in again. Well, how much money KO? So oh, fuck nobody's your name, dude. Uh, he <laughs> dropped you. us 20, 20 bones says, this is my second favorite podcast. Uh, my favorite, second favorite police podcast. So what do you send your favorite podcast? You give them like 40 bucks. He sent, a bucks? Ton, he sent a ton last week. Do you remember? I know, but if we're the second <laughs> best, what do you think the first best is getting? And then how do I we get into the first, the first best? best? I want to know who they are. That Jeez. that you can hey you can DM me that, Kalsu. <laughs> who's the who's the first favorite? <laughs> you can send her a D pick. Just make sure that you uh, put money with it. You got to pay her to look at your dick. <laughs> Any you are getting forwarded everything that comes on way. So be careful what you wish for. <laughs> oh man, I don't care. It's, I look. I'll look at a good dick pick. I never shy away from a what good dick pick. I never, I never shy away. This is the after you make me go public on my face, my private Facebook about this podcast. Oh, that's this right. Is the show we're having. 
That's right. I forgot that you went public to all your friends and family about us. Thank you. Uh, letting them know about. I'm gonna get to meet the. I'm gonna meet the family sometime. She's gonna bring me in and let me meet the. Rest. Just kidding. All right, go ahead. Well. Come on, Jesus. Where? Nobody wants to hear about your dick pics. Let's go. Start. Oh this my God. You're the worst podcast partner ever. On <laughs> June 3rd of 2019 is when this happened. So we're talking about Anthony Temple, right? He was 17 at the time. Um, we're gonna talk about him and his 53 year old dad, Bert. Um, so they lived in Baton Rouge. They actually had a really nice house. Um, Bert was a project engineer and was known to have made pretty, pretty good money. Um, had a nice home, had, um, you know, nice fenced in yard and a great, like an affluent part of town. In fact, when the police were called to this house with that 911 call, they all talk about the fact that, um, you know, you you don't get a call like that in a neighborhood like this. It was unheard of. They were all very, very surprised. Um, so, <clears throat> yes, Sarah, please do. Um, so they were all they were all very surprised to come to this neighborhood for a call of murder. Um, so at the time, the only two people living in the home were Anthony and his dad, Bert. Just a few months prior to that, Susan, that you guys saw the picture of, the stepmom had left. She left due to abuse um, from Bert. Okay. So, so, and th- and so mom, just really quick, sorry to interrupt yeah. you. Um, I just always try to pay attention the best I can. Some people say I interrupt you, but I don't, I think it's, I'm just trying to learn this conversation. I'm trying to empathetically yeah. listen to this fucking story here. I don't get this part. <clears throat> mom splits step-mom, and just leaves yeah. homeboy. No, stepmom splits? That was or the real mom. Well, we're going to talk about real mom. That was stepmom. This I was just talking about around the time that this murder happened. That okay. was currently the living situation was dad, stepmom, and Anthony in the home. But okay. before the murder took place, she had she'd hit the skids, right? She'd gone because because okay. she'd had teeth knocked out. Okay. Well, I'm glad I'm paying attention because stepmom makes a lot more sense. All right. <clears throat> yep. I'm tracking. So um, there's not a whole lot to say right there because we're going to – I wanted to – explain what kind of happened right then leading up to the murder like right immediately and now we're going to go back and talk about the lives of all of them to, that got us to this point right um so anthony was actually born in texas his mother is a woman named Teresa. there's anthony um once he was apprehended um his mom's name is Teresa. his mother and grandmother still live that's Susan, the step, if you're, if you're not, uh, if you are watching, you're seeing Bert and Susan, the stepmom on the screen. Um, so Teresa has not been with Bert since Bert was five years old. Um, when he calls, since Anthony was five years old. Oh, excuse me. Yes. Since Anthony Sorry. was five years old. When, um, when he calls 911 to say that he killed his dad. Um, do we actually, do we have that somewhere? No, uh, because Netflix did a documentary. They have like all the yeah. rights to the audio. So yeah, it's, it's hard. hard. You it's can't like, get the whole. Couldn't even get it on. Unless you, I couldn't even get it on Reddit. Yeah, so. me either. So unless you unless you watch it on Netflix or get the audio from there, that's the only way you're getting it, guys. But basically, when he calls, he's saying they say hello, such and such county sheriff's office, and he just says hello, and he said I just killed my dad. And the 911 operator is a little stunned, and she said, "I'm sorry, you said you just killed your dad." And he said, "Yes," and she said are you sure, you know, is he maybe alive? And he said, I don't know. And then he said, I think he's breathing. Um, <clears throat> and so she said, and then Anthony will maintain during this documentary. And he doesn't really do a whole lot of interviews, honestly, um, that he, his opinion in the matter was that it was in self-defense and that once the police got there and the paramedics got there, that they would be able to, um, take his father to a hospital and revive him or save him, keep him alive. Uh, That's what he has maintained. So he says, I don't know. I think he's still breathing. And she said, how many times did you shoot him? And he says, "Um, I don't know, two, three. Yeah. And he says, I don't know, two or three. And then we've learned that he did shoot him. He made contact with the bullets twice. So he shot him twice. It was a fatal Gunshot wound to the head that ultimately ended Bert's life, but the third bullet uh, hit the wall behind him. So um, Bert wound up dying, by the way, three days later um, in, I think, Lady of Our Lakes Hospital or something is what it's called. Um, So as soon as he was brought in, um, 
he was immediately placed on a ventilator. I don't, he never regained consciousness. I mean, definitely he, you know, was done from that, from the get go. Um, so as soon as the police get there, they put handcuffs on Anthony and he will talk about that. He, he's so flat in his affect, right? And so like in psychology, you talk about an affect and an affect is the way your face appears, your body language, your voice, right? Like we have inflections in our voice and things that show emotion or um, maybe shaken breaths or, you know, different kinds of things to elicit certain emotions or to let someone know how you feel. When he spoke, he was a very flat affect. Now you can have this in someone who is um, intentionally, intentionally and maliciously murdering someone like um, a lot of like we talked the other week about the difference between being antisocial right the name given right. usually to an introvert or having a having um, antisocial personality disorder it's a it's completely different things so someone with antisocial personality disorder if they call 911 they are very likely going to sound like this they are going to sound very with a very flat affect um, but also if you've had years and years and years of neglect and abuse, and then now you've shot your father and you might be in shock and you already were not very seasoned verbally with other people. We're going to talk about that. That could be the reason he sounded the way he did as well. So you guys can kind of figure out how you feel about that as this goes on. But that was the first um, homicide detective that spoke with him. That was his biggest um kind of concern with Anthony or issue with him was just how flat his affect was. And based on his history, usually when people acted that way, they usually wound up being guilty. So the initial thought from anyone involved, um, <clears throat> DA, <clears throat> any of the prosecutors, the detective uh, was that he was definitely guilty of murder. And, you know, well, I say that, but that's that was their assumption before they go into interrogations and trial. So he calls and he says he shot him two or three times, doesn't know if he's alive. They come, they put him in handcuffs, and he said, I just thought that they were detaining me because, you know, they just kind of needed to look at everything and see how my dad was and um, that they would just kind of like let me go. He seems fully to think that as soon as as soon as they check things out, he was just going to kind of be free to let go. Um Moving forward, he's interrogated. Um, there are no defensive wounds on his hand. So when they asked what happened, he said that um, it's kind of the middle of the night and he wakes up to his dad going through his phone. Uh, he's a 17-year-old boy. He's kind of pissed about it, right? So he says, um, um, you know, why are you going through my phone? And Bert is enraged and he says, who have you been talking to? And we find out that Bert was really trying to see if Anthony was talking to Susan, the stepmother, because she had moved out and Bert, we're going to learn had to have his hands and everything. He had to be, he was essentially puppet master of his, his area of anyone around him, anyone related to him, his home, his children, his, um, <clears throat> excuse me. So Bert gets, Highly agitated, which is not unusual for him at this point. He's kind of, he's always been a um, pretty bad guy at home. We're going to talk about that. But leading up to these events at the very end, it had gotten, it had really spiraled out of control. And I think that really happened once Susan left, which we, we know if you um, ever, if you've known someone like this or looked into this kind of thing or studied this kind of thing, that with domestic violence, particularly when he controlled her and he had, her under his grasp and when she finally made the choice to break away he spiraled he could yeah. because he had nothing else like that was it right um this was his second wife that's done that right that's yeah i don't think yeah i don't think he was ever married to the first to anthony's mother i, I could oh, be wrong okay. there but but okay. regardless same situation um so she left he spiraled and Anthony basically lost it. So he said, dad's going through his phone. Like that's his recollection of the events of that night. But, um, the, the homicide detective that was initially questioning Anthony, his concerns were that, like I said, he had no defensive wounds on his hand. So he says that he got up, he and, um, Bert start to, um, not really get in a scuffle, but Bert kind of lunges at him. Uh, he was bigger than Anthony. Anthony's not a real big guy. Um, Bert lunged at him. He then runs like out, like through a bathroom into Bert's bedroom where he grabbed a revolver. 
Um, and then we find out that he grabbed not one, but two revolvers. And when he was asked why he had two, he said, in case one didn't work, I haven't shot either one of them in a long time. So. And those pistols were in Bert's room? Or were they in Anthony's Yeah, room? I think they were. I think one might have been in the bathroom and one in the bedroom. I kind of zoned That's out. That's so that strange. Moment, I like, I mean, I get it. Like, I mean, yeah, I've got revolver. guns strategically placed around my house. Yeah. But like, I don't know. I mean, does it? Does it seem odd that he would have a revolver in the bathroom and then one in the? I guess don't not. quote me on the, Don't quote Texas. me that they were both in the bathroom. Um, I just think like it's odd ones in the bathroom, ones in the bedroom. <laughs> I think it's more well, odd that they were revolvers. Um, revolvers don't jam, so that's true. Um, so he grabs both of them, and then to the um, to the detective's point again, I'm just pointing out kind of both sides of the way people looked at this case when it or this kid when this first happened. Uh, he said, you know, you don't grab one gun, much less two. He said, I've not had someone tell me they grabbed two guns unless they had the intent to kill this man. Yeah. Um, Anthony said, you know, I mean, I don't know. He said, I just, I wanted to make sure that again, he's in this interrogation room. You guys, when you watch it, you'll know, but he's very, um, he's a little fidgety. Like he keeps kind of tucking his hair behind his ears and, uh, He'll show with his hands what he did with the gun. Like he'll like mimic the shooting. Um, and then he, but his voice doesn't really change a lot. And he just says, yes. And it almost looks like he's telling the story f from a different person, if that makes sense. Not like he has dissociative personality disorder, like multi personalities, not like that, but it's like, he's recalling it and like saying it from somewhere else. Um, mm. Which is also a symptom of trauma. When you, when you shut, things down and push them back and, and essentially um, forget things like your brain gets rid of it. That's essentially what this sounds like. And so um, anyway, we go into the fact that he just said, yeah, I thought that they were going to start. I thought that they were going to save him. I didn't think he was going to die. Um, and that was that. So that was how that was the murder. And then leading up to him being apprehended or at least interrogated at this point. So we can go back to his childhood um, he was born in September of, well, whenever it was, he was 17 then. So I think 2001, yeah, September of 2001, um, in Texas to a woman named Teresa Thompson. Um, I lost my virginity in 2001. To Teresa Thompson? No, no, unfortunately not. She seems like a nice lady. She'd have been older, which I was always into the older woman anyway at that time, but no. That's all you like. No, but 2001, I was, so I lost my virginity. It was in the Sea Turtle Inn, Jack's Beach. <laughs> Can I see that? Um, what tattoo do you have on the inside of your? <laughs> the tattoo has nothing to do with me losing Where... my virginity. Can I see it? I forget. What's on your, the inside of your? <laughs> <laughs> it's my, stu I can't even show it to you. It's so bad. There it is. You can see it. You can see it. it's like a little sea turtle. That has nothing I to never, do. I never knew. <laughs> That's. Has nothing to do with that, okay? That was just there was a lot of sea turtles where I grew up. That's why I have a sea uh, turtle tattoo. It has nothing to do with me losing my virginity in the Sea Turtle Inn in Jack's Beach. Anyway, okay. Yeah, what? I mean, I listen. Okay, okay. My tattoo has uh -huh. nothing to do with it, though. My tattoo was supposed to be. If you really want the truth about my tattoo, it was supposed to be a ninja turtle, but I chickened down and got a sea turtle instead. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh God bless. All right. So, so he was born, he in, was 2001. born in 2001 to Teresa Thompson. It's a good year. It's a good year. And um, whew, um, yep. So she had um a pretty modest upbringing. Uh, she gets involved with Bert. Uh, they met. She was a waitress in a diner, and they met, and she thought he was funny and um charming and, and all these kinds of things and um they get together she tells her mother a little bit about him and then the mom eventually meets him and her sister meets him and they're not fans and they see that she's behaving behaving a little bit differently around him um which is another i just keep pointing out these things i think that based off of last week's show with the acid king with ricky queso if you guys remember um, we talked about his upbringing. I don't think it was nearly as severe as this, but we then talk about how it can shape your brain. It really, things like this can really rewire the way your brain works. And so um, she was kind of acting differently around 
Bert, as far as her mother and sister noticed. Um, he was probably already starting to exhibit, you know, behaviors of isolating her and things like this. Um, not long after the physical abuse starts, um, he got mad at something. She was cooking for dinner one night and he threw a glass. When I say he threw a glass of milk at her, like threw it at her, you know, the glass at her face. Um, just things like this. It starts out relatively not small, but small compared to what it ultimately leads up to with him. So they have Anthony. Uh, fast forward a little bit. We do know that Anthony's sister, uh, Teresa and Bert had another child, Natasha, and she was an older sister of Anthony's. And Natasha can remember um, Bert holding Anthony as a baby while he beat her mom. Um, okay, I, I'm you're, you're a woman, right? Um, I think well, so. Debatable. Can't tell with that turtleneck on. Maybe trying to hide the old uh, the Adam's, Adam's apple, apple there. <clears throat> but <Yeah>. um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I, for me, right? If and I can't say if I was a girl because I don't know because I'm not a girl. But if I was a girl, I feel like the minute a man verbally or physically assaults me, like mm -hmm. that should be or at least you should be taught or you should be teaching your children. That is like that's a deal breaker. It's like a hard not, no, right? A hard no. Like if you verbally assault me, like you call me a bitch, you call me a motherfucker, anything out of anger like that. We're definitely not no. getting married. Like we're definitely not going to do a marriage here because people who love each other don't call each other names like that. Also, definitely if somebody throws a fucking glass of milk at you, maybe that's a sign that yeah. we break away. What is it with women that they feel like they can't, you know, cause I, you know, does it happen overnight or is it just like this? You know, I don't know. I don't, you know, my mom's a pretty tolerant woman. She puts up with a lot of my dad's bullshit, but I guarantee you if my dad like verbally assaulted her or physically assaulted her, my mom would be like, yeah, I'm out. Right. After 35 years of marriage, 30, no, 40 years of marriage. She'd be like, dumb. Scared. So I can tell you I would be out. Um, probably not before I've swung back. Right. But, and this is exactly what I was talking about a minute ago when I was touching on how th the psychology of abuse can rewire one's brain. So Teresa, <clears throat> Teresa's mother, I forget her mother's name. We don't even, nobody hears. But her mother, so Anthony's mother, was abused by her husband. Then okay. she gets remarried, and that, that man, who is now Teresa's stepfather, sexually abuses her as a child. So then moving forward, he not only is sexually abusing her, he is physically abusing her otherwise. Um, so she, So her mother lived this. There's a pattern, right? Her mother lived yeah. it. We're choosing the same kind of men. She's now living it. She's seeing her mother go through it and not leaving this man. Now she gets this man. Now, now it's happening to her, and it's very much part of the same cycle. So when, so when you ask me, what I like, what about these women? Like, no, no it's not even. It, it's not a question. I'm gone. Right. But these things don't happen overnight, and usually men don't go from nothing to punching. Nothing right. to throw in milk. It's it's psychological. It's verbal. It's emotional for little bits until it becomes bigger and bigger. And and that's how that's how people can find themselves in these situations. So I'm saying it's not always quite that um, cut and dry, right? Yeah, so, and I feel like if you have kids, though, it's like you you owe a sense of security, right? Like you owe them mm -hmm. <clears throat> a certain aspect, a, a certain amount of security and safety as a mother. And if you have an abusive husband or, or father or whatever, it's kind of your responsibility as a good mom to say like, all right, like I birthed this child and it's my response. And same with the father. If the mom's abusing the child or whatever, he has, he has the obligation to protect, to protect the child and get mm -hmm. it the fuck out of the, uh, because you know, it, it's crazy to me, man. I, well, let me catch a motherfucker doing this to a woman let me catch let me find out you know what i mean like i don't right. think we have enough men that are prepared to fuck start another dude's face once right. they find like if i found out any of my friends beat on a girl i'd probably beat on that you know what i mean well, yeah i think you would but i so just it's like where, where's this guy's fr friends at you know where's this the the other cat uh that we did last week you know what i mean Wh where mm -hmm. are the people around that say hey dude you're kind of a piece of shit you should stop yeah. or i'm gonna 
Well, and absolutely. And this is like what I was harking, harkening on at the beginning of the show when I said um, we've we've all learned, especially with some more recent news events and things, we being careful about making blanket statements and saying I would never do this or, I, you know, I would always do that. So, yes, I can't imagine saying, well, Lastro, if you can get yourself out to the meet and greet, but you just say you can't. Um, you know, I can't imagine myself. I, I can tell you right now, yes, I would leave at all costs. There's no if I have if my children are involved, if it's just me. But let's say I'm, I'm used to getting beat, but I have kids. I'm, I'm going right. But again, the the flip side of the coin is we do have to look at her. Psycho- I am not excusing it. I, I can't imagine. Sure, I and I will it. tell I you at the end it. of at the end of at the end of this day, this child was failed at every turn. Okay. No one, no one was there for this child at all. So I definitely do not agree with it. And, um, and I'm not okay with it. I also know the flip side of the coin is, you know, she's got definitely some psych issues going on at this point. Okay. That, you know, that's just fair. That's, that is what it is. So she was molested. She was beaten. Her mother was beaten. She goes on to have Bert as a, as a partner. And then, um, his beatings get increasingly worse with her again. Like I said, he would, the older sister, you know, remembered seeing him hold Anthony as a baby while he's beating her mother up. Um, so at some point she does get on, she, she, she and Bert moved to where his parents lived in Baton Rouge. They were in Texas where they met. So her mother is in Texas. Grandma's in Texas there. And they go to Baton Rouge where, um, Bert's family is and where he's from. So she and Bert are raising Anthony and Natasha in Louisiana. Um, eventually the beatings get so bad. One day he um, pulled, she talked about that he pulled so much of her hair out and she left. And her mother said that when her mother saw her, the first thing she noticed was how much hair she was missing. So you guys know like that's not super easy to do. I mean, you can pull out some hair, but to, to make it visible that someone's missing hair from a, from a fight. Uh, Let no, no. me get Teresa's name out your mouth. <laughs> 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 but, <laughs> um, so, okay. So this is where, this is where the first time <laughs> I can't do that leading up to what I'm about to say. Um, so this is where the first time it's it's really pretty bad. So she leaves and she leaves the home with Anthony at home with Bert because Bert beat her so severe so severely she said I got to go and she gets on a bus to go home to her mother in Texas and when asked why didn't you take Anthony she right, said that's well, what I, was I knew about to say. she said I knew he would kill me and Anthony both if I took him and that's Fucking, like let's go say, like I'd, I'd like take those chances it. Yeah. Absolutely. I agree. I know. Not leave it. We don't leave a man behind ever. And so was, So so she gets on the bus and she goes um back to Texas. Her mother picks her up at the bus station. She notices immediately. Obviously, she's not only been beaten, but she just talks about her demeanor and um the chick was not okay. So she goes home and um recoups it her mother's house for a few weeks um, said she, there's a lot of facial injuries. A lot of things are broken, missing a lot of hair. Um, I don't yeah, mean, I don't, I, like I don't I said, like, how, how does, I mean, how do you like hide that from like a whole bunch of other people? Like, I don't know. I, maybe I, maybe I'm blind to it or something, but I feel like, well, if there's anybody out there that their husband's beating their ass, just DM me, like, give me a shot right. at fixing it. You know what I mean? Right. But like, I feel like I'm in tune enough for if a woman came in the bar and was giving me like vibes, I would just have a conversation and say like, yo, what's going on, dude? Because this is crazy. She goes all the way back to Texas, leaves her kid. She's got gaping hair loss and enough f- facial injuries that she's got to lay low for a minute. And nobody was willing to go stand up to this asshole. It's crazy. Absolutely. I agree. I'm sorry. I'm getting a lot of flack for my turtleneck now. You know what I mean? Like damned if you do. A bunch Goodness, of fucking y'all. perverts out there. Can't, can't. Send her a dick pic, and then she'll so get rid of the. Bad. For every dick pic she gets, another um, she'll lose like a sleeve. It's like a what? What is that game? Where it's like strip poker? Oh yeah, but with 
but with but with dick pics yeah we're not doing any of that though y'all so um so so she goes home with mom she recoups right then she does get she gets um she gets <laughs> sorry last row just said on Trey check your dm <laughs> 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 Last year, Lopez is already up on it. Um, so um, she does get Bert to bring Anthony back. Uh, I forget exactly how that happened. That she they have the conversation. Um, she does get him to bring him to her. Um, they she gets she goes back. They 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 go back. Um, or no, excuse me. I'm sorry. Anthony is there with her. Because though Anthony was never, we've talked about we've talked about this before. Um, you know, until this past year, my kids were homeschooled all up until this year. Yours have been homeschooled this whole time. Our kids have been in um, skateboarding, baseball, Cub Scouts, but you know, in social situations constantly. And on top of that, they're being educated well. So th- there's no no issues with that whatsoever. In saying that, Bert quote homeschooled Anthony um clearly that's not what's happening um so with him living in Baton Rouge and mom in Texas with grandmother I'm not sure my phone actually did just light up and now I'm terrified um unless that was you was that you um and so um (laughs) so um with I, I this is what I don't quite understand and maybe you can shed some light here with with Bert being in Baton Rouge and her being in Texas, he went to the um, I don't know the court the wherever in Baton Rouge to say, hey, um, his mother, our child's mother, has him. She is unfit. She is on drugs. He says all these things about her, and he says she um, she says that I beat her. She's crazy, like all of these things, and somehow he's able to get them to escort him to pick up this child. Well, you you know, you're working through a magistrate and a magistrate's a human being, right? And if you only have one side of the story and this guy's already a master manipulator, you you don't just get away with, you you don't get away with keeping women around that you get to beat that ass without some sort of like manipulation involved. So, you know, if you go to the magistrate and I've seen this a hundred times, man, I've seen it, you know, I'll I'll give you a a quick, a quick story, but this one guy, his wife was really all over him. And I knew, I knew both of them and, and they've had problems. They've been arrested. Their son was also, their older son was a gang member. And so I've, I've dealt with the family a bunch, but the woman, the woman was the aggressor in the family. And at one point she had like thrown gasoline on the dude and lit him on fire. She ended up doing like two years for it. Um, but anyway, she gets out. Yeah, she gets out. And then she goes down to a magistrate and she gets a restraining order against the guy. And then she tries, you know, okay. So she gets a restraining order against this dude. This guy gets a job, a drywall job at an Indian restaurant, a new Indian restaurant that was opening up in this kind of like a strip mall. Like it was like a gas station, a barber shop, a laundry mat, and then this uh, Indian restaurant that was open up. And so I had actually gone into this new Indian restaurant and hung out a few times while they were working because it's a real bad side of town. And the guy was working in there and I was talking to a man and I was like, man, you're actually pretty fucking good at, at drywall. You know, I was like, I didn't know you were a drywall guy. And he's like, yo, man, I've been doing drywall my whole life, you know, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, I, for two days I'd seen him working on this thing. Well, the home girl goes to the gap, the, the, the grocery mart and then calls me and says that, uh, or puts a 911 call in that this man that she has restraining order with is in the same shopping mall as her. So I pull up on scene and I go right into the Indian market because I already know the guy. And he's in there drywall. He's got the mask on. He's covered from head to toe in drywall. And he's in there just standing away, minding his own business. I said, hey, man, is homegirl here? And he was like, no, man, I'm, I'm over here drywall. And I'm not, you know, why would she come over here? I don't even think she knows that I work here. And I was like, well, we just got a call that says that you're in the same building as her. And he's like, no. Nah. So I walk out and I walk down to the gas station and there she is. And she's like, he's down there. He needs to go. And I said, well, he's working down there. There's a thousand other mini marts. Just go to a different mini mart. And she says, well, no, it says that he can't be on the same property as me as I'm here. And I said, well, that's not how that law works. You have to make, you have to make, uh, you know, you have to make just as, as 
you have to do your due diligence as well. You know what I mean? Especially if this guy doesn't even know he, he's, if you don't, this guy doesn't even know you're here. Right. So I said, I'm not going to ask him to leave his place of business. He's not even in the same place of business as you. And that business is closer. We're not going to worry about it. Well, she left there and went and took a warrant out for his arrest for breaking the, um, for, for breaking the restraining order. And I went down to the magistrate and the lie, I had read the little affidavit that she had filled out and it was completely false that he had, you know, come down to the market and was holding, you know, telling her that she couldn't get any food and everything. And I was like, what do you, what do you want me to do? Like, I've got all the video footage. I've got video of the, the mini market. I'll go pull it. I know for a fact, this dude didn't do any of that. Right. And, you know, at the end of the day, he was already, he had already been picked up and arrested and, and I had to fight this battle for the guy. Had I not been there to fight that battle for him, mm. he would have been in jail oh, for the cracks. So, you know, it, it's all about what you say and how you say it to these magistrates. And unfortunately, master manipulators are always going to do just that. They're just going to master manipulate. Man, you're right. You know what? That's a great point. And Teresa, I saw your comment. You're right. Like mom had mom did have a restraining order at that point against him. I think that there were just so many things like in when she was in Texas, um, And it's just like those states, you know, things don't talk across state lines. And and I don't know about I mean, I know Baton Rouge isn't tiny. I'm not sure about the town in Texas they were in. And, you know, just but you're right. I mean, you're exactly right. The manipulation is huge. And that's what causes that's what caused her to be in a relationship with him. Right. Or to continue it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, you know, and I guess if you go and you look at the story I just told you, obviously those two people had a relationship together, even though it was completely toxic and ridiculous. But I don't understand. And I feel like if you're listening to our show and you're a woman out there, please know that in no way, shape or form should you tolerate any verbal or physical abuse. And if you're a dude and this, you know, if somebody would have told like Gabby Petito and Brian Landry, the same shit, you do people who love each other, do not call each other bitch or whore or, retard or anything like that out of anger. I would argue that you shouldn't say it period. Um, it's a hard line for me. I don't, I, you'll never hear me call my wife a single name like that. I just don't feel like that's what love is. But if you are out there and you're being verbally abused or physically abused, it is, you need to get out and there's nobody that's going to look down on you or shame you. Just get the fuck out. Call somebody, get some help. There's plenty of dudes out there that would love to fuck start another dude's face for hitting on a woman. Just go to the bar. Tell a dude that, uh, that that homeboy, you know, show him the evidence. I don't know, but do something. Don't just take it. You're better than that. Right. I'm not saying go hire somebody to beat your your boyfriend's ass either. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is you got to do something. Yeah. And I mean, Talk and, to somebody. and if you got to figure th- some things out or you have questions, I do know um, a PI. So. <sighs> Leave it to you. I'm trying to be serious, trying to make the world a better place. You know? All right. You know what? You can, you can, you can, you can put the dress on a lipstick on a pig. It's lipstick on a pig. (laughs) Lipstick on a pig, but it's still a pig at the end of the day. (laughs) Um I just so so it's just this is the reason this moment matters so much is because um mom was not home this day that that Bert and the police show up to the home. Uh grandma was there. We know grandmother's history with men i'm not saying men are bad but her history with men um has has been terrible consistently as has teresa's so the police show up with bert and he's already um a figure of control and power to her even though he was horrible and she knows what he did to her daughter there is power and control there and they have paperwork um and they say that they're there to get anthony and she said, why? And they say, we have documentation here. We're here to get him. And she lets the, the child go. She told him that she loved him and that she would see him soon. And <clears throat> and she let him go. And she will say now, she's 82 now. Um, she cries like at the end of the documentary. She's an old older lady. And she, uh, you know, her daughter Teresa said she thought her mom would probably never live that down. But in that moment, she let him go. And when asked why, like, how was that enough for you to just say, you know, you know what this man's capable of, right? And for you to say, all right, grandson, like, they've got papers. That's what she said. She was like, well, they they had paperwork. Um, I mean, what option do you have? I mean, if anything, they'll just get you for obstruction and arrest you. I, mean, I guess at they least could, but I think with, I'm going to. she went down with a fight, I I'm guess. not sure that I would just say, well. 
Yeah. Okay. I mean, I'd I mean, say like, well, he's not. He's not here. <laughs> no, like we can see, we can see him playing video games. Well, something mm-hmm. along no. the lines of what are you know under what grounds? And when they show her the paperwork, and then she, you know, and then and she can say, well, my daughter's here because he beat her, and you know all these things. Like I don't, I don't know if that would have changed anything. I just know that that seemed too too easy. You know what I'm saying? A pet named Steve one. Thank you. Thanks for dropping whatever that is. What is a uh, what is, what is a super is it sticker? A pair? A it's a pair. California ten dollar super sticker. I don't know, but that's, that's a pair cool. with a um, sweatband on. I like, I like that. it. I like it too. Um, so last row says, how- "I will bend over and turn your boyfriend gay in your defense." All right, <laughs> sorry, keep going. I should even read that out loud. Wait, you'll. He's the bender over, or um. Oh, we are we are a pet named Steve's favorite podcast. Hear that, Kasu? Kasu? Oh, yeah. Suck on that. Suck we, on that. You are something feisty today, Eric. Um, so, so that's when we hear that Anthony was taken by Burke. Now, in the documentary, and then, again, there's not... I hate to do that. I hate to have a show where all I can do is, hey, like, hey, guys, I watched that same Netflix documentary as you, and we all saw the same thing. But in the document, that's all we have. Um, or just news articles from when it happened that don't really explain a lot. Um, so when that did happen, Teresa will now refer to that as when Anthony was kidnapped. She says that um, he was kidnapped and all these things, which, granted... It shouldn't have happened, but it when you first hear kidnapped, it didn't elicit what I thought had happened. I thought the man came, the dad came in the middle of the night and, you know, snuck him out and, and took him or whatever. Right. So at that time, what she's what the mother's um, way of explaining it is that that's OK. But that's stepmom. Remember, that's the second one. That no, I know. Out. But I'm just putting up pictures of, of dad. Him, yeah. And so um, she mom just says, excuse me, Teresa will say. We put Natasha, meaning her daughter, uh, we put flyers up everywhere. Um, and she said, I just hope that he was okay. I hoped he was going to be all right. And um, that seems a little over dramatic. Like we put flyers up because the protective child protective custody took our child back to Baton they Rouge. Could, child protective custody didn't. Dad came with cops to get him. And now she's, he's living with dad. And she knows that. Right, so but why are you putting saying, up fucking posters? You know where he's at. Because they, but they, but they didn't. She didn't. She said she didn't know exactly where they were until mm. until she um she knew his parents were there in Baton Rouge and Baton Rouge. So she started putting up flyers around where her parents were, or where his excuse me, where Bert's parents were, in the hopes of Bert and Anthony, in the hopes that someone around there would see that. Um, she even called his parents at one point, and then just like didn't follow through and she said i hoped that he would be okay and she's crying when she's saying this so i'm not saying this to be so callous about her it was just such an odd exchange this um her recollection of that part of the events and she said um i just knew that maybe by the time he was 16 17 18 he might be on social media and maybe i could find him then Mm. makes sense so time goes on and now anthony's in the house with He's five, by the way, guys. I don't know if I didn't say he was five when that happened. So he spent from five. Yeah. He was always he spent from an infancy in in an abusive home, right? Even if he right. wasn't being abused, he was in a terrible toxic home until then. And then he was taken at five um, by dad back to Baton Rouge. Then he spends the next um, a few years go by, and I think he meets Susan that we showed earlier, and they get married. I think around the time um, Anthony was around ten. So she will say, keep in mind, I told you that. Bert said that he homeschooled Anthony and I always have to clarify people can say what they want right people can call themselves Christians and not be a Christian people can say they're homeschooling right. their child and not homeschooling their child so some, um, some women podcasters can call themselves modest when just because they're wearing a turtleneck I'm so this is the I tried to y'all I tried to even put my hair in a bun I even have my glasses I was gonna put on my glasses but my computer <laughs> But now you just look like Veronica Corningstone from Anchorman. I was Anchorman. trying, y'all, but it was like, it was like, there's like, it makes <laughs> rectangles. I can't. All right. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, anyway, so, no, oh, geez, I always lose my train of thought here. So he's in, he's in the home. He meets Susan when Anthony, uh, they get married when Anthony is like nine or 10. He said that he had homeschooled Anthony. 
But we learned that Anthony was never in any, Anthony's not spent one year of school in his life. So when Susan met him at 10, she taught him basic kindergarten um, um, letters, math, reading, writing, these kinds of things when he was 10. Um, so not only was he not in school in any kind of way, homeschooled or in a brick and mortar, he was isolated, um, completely isolated from everyone. He was not allowed to have friends. He never spent any time with any other children. There were other kids in the neighborhood, but he never had, he never had them as, um, confidants or, or buddies or anything that you would expect, um, to happen. So, um, as time goes on, he thought that his mother was dead. Um, he didn't know anything about a grandmother. He didn't, he didn't know anything about any extended, any family, his sister, he didn't, nothing. Um, his dad told him basically that anybody was either dead or didn't want him or whatever. And so all he knows is his father in this home. Susan comes in the picture. She has a son from a previous marriage named Peyton. So Peyton's in the picture as well. Um, so he spent some time. He so it was the only time Anthony really had another boy around. Um, and I think Peyton could get away with a little bit more than Anthony or Susan could, but not not really a lot. He said he remembers uh, one of his um, remembrances was um, Bert throwing. If you picture the game Jenga, right? This second yeah. game Jenga when it's in the box, you know, it's pretty heavy. You know, it's like a little heavy in the sense of if it's hurling. Yeah toward your head sure. as a kid so like threw the, the the jenga box at his head um called him every kind of name under the sun this is to peyton the stepson so this is just kind of his recount um on bert and growing up with bert um and just how much how horrible it was so peyton was actually there for a few years until he said it was like a war zone he said you are on pins and needles at every turn he said anthony essentially anthony lived in his own bedroom on um screen screens and devices and he said you know just to not make waves like it was I just bet you i bet you he lived in his bedroom because inside of his bedroom was a ghost bed that's right this show is brought to you today by ghost bed ghostbed.com use that promo code wolfpack which saves you 35 percent off right now there is a big giant flash sale going on uh, where you can get lots of deals. However, you can't get all of the deals that you can get with that promo code Wolfpack. So we encourage you to use the code Wolfpack. If that deal isn't the best deal for you, though, it's okay because you can go to the customer survey and just throw in that you heard about Wolfpack. But right now, uh, we're, we're, we're getting 35% off. But if you want to use this limited time only Labor Day flash sale that they have going up, it's already started. It's 30% off of the luxury adjustable base, 25% off of bedding and pillows, 30% off all award-winning mattresses, 40 to 50% off adjustable base bundles, tome fop toppers. Our promo code gets you 35% off on most of that stuff, though. So our, our code does work out better. Our favorite part about Ghost Bed is that they're made in the good old help me out there, Miley Cyrus. USA, 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 USA. I put my hands up. They're playing and my song. The butterflies fly away. away. Shaking my hands like right yeah. Moving my hips like yeah. Put my hands up. They're playing my song. Your the fault, Sarah. Gonna be okay. <clears throat> there you go. That was for our super chat there. I don't know why people like to see me sing, but they do. But yes, right they now, don't. go over to Ghost Bed. If you're look, look, if you need a bed, if, you, if this show stresses you out so much you can't sleep after it, Get a ghost bed. Solves all your life problems. It'll make you a better person. Uh, if you are beating your wife, stop. Get a ghost bed. Get some sleep. Cheer the fuck up. Stop beating on your woman or stop beating on your mans. Ghost bed solving all the world problems these days. Yep. All right. Um, Imperial Girl is asking if there's going to be karaoke on the 26th. Uh, you never sure know. Says, if, if, if she's if, coming. If we're there, you know she's coming. Could, who is Imperial Girl? Yeah, she's coming. Um, I didn't know that, but um, she's from. We've from, been uh, from Atlanta, Georgia right? Or somewhere. Atlanta. I didn't want to dox Georgia, her. But I didn't want to dox her. I didn't want to dox the that, fans. Please. Redact um, it. Redact it. Uh, <laughs> Last Rose corrected me on my lyrics from from Miley Cyrus. Look, if you were my son, Last Rose Lopez, I would beat on you, and I think it would be justified. Be a justified ass whooping. He just said he'd bend over for it, so. <laughs> 
All right, so so ship so, bag okay, is so, going to so, ship bag for. So we're for talking a about we're just, we're going to start start kind of wrapping it up, but we talked about how um how the stepbrother uh, Peyton right he was giving his kind of recollection of the abuse endured by Bert, um and he just he couldn't get out of there fast enough. So at some point he looked at his mom, but see here we go again though right he has a father his father's name is Dennis it's kind of an interesting uh, family however. Dennis still wasn't as bad as Bert by any means. And he said, um, he said, um, I, you know, I told my mom, I'm not going to live in this hell hole anymore. And that's when I think, wait a minute, why is he there at all? <laughs> right. With these things happening, why isn't he with his dad as it, as it is? So he called his dad. Um, his dad's name is Dennis. Dennis comes to cops, uh, gets Peyton from the home. Uh, Dennis then calls the cops himself to try to get Anthony out of the home. And when the cops come and this is you guys, this is a, so this is where if you want to play devil's advocate or look at what some, I mean, it's very few, but what some people may say was the issue or not is that when the cops came for Anthony and they looked straight at him and they said, um, does he beat you? And he said, no, he said, no. Um, I think a lot of kids are like raised to be afraid of uh, afraid of the police. He was a teenager at this point. I don't think he was afraid of the police. I think he was like it's not cool. terrified of Bert. No, I think yeah, he was but I, deathly yeah, terrified. Well, of Bert. Sure. Okay, so you, you're thinking that he's so scared of Bert that he doesn't want to tell the police that he oh beat him. The kid him. has not had until like Peyton came in his life. He never even had another child around him, another human outside of his father, yeah. who beat him. So guess what? We're also going to find out. Bert had multiple, multiple cameras around the home. So like, think about your oh. ring doorbell. Maybe you got a couple on the side out mm -hmm. back. Cause it gets a little extra dark back there, you know, whatever. No multiple. He kept a GPS tracker on Anthony. So if Anthony went anywhere outside of the home, Anthony couldn't leave the home. So when I say he was isolated, I mean, he was essentially held hostage, right? That's crazy. So Susan will say that um, he even had her car was attached to this as well. So he would get a notification on his cell phone when her car engine turned off. <laughs> so it just gets deeper and deeper that this wasn't even, gosh, I mean, I hate to say like, he didn't just beat her. <laughs> he didn't just hit her. <laughs> like, but I mean, it's, it's at every turn. It was awful, awful, awful. So when I say, okay, the cops existence. came and said, and the cops come to say to this teenager, does does he beat you and he says no i mean jesus i mean I, I, who knows what the kid's gonna i doubt he's gonna look at him and say yeah i've not left my bedroom for years because i was afraid he was gonna beat me more and if i walk outside he sees it so when you guys watch the documentary you're gonna see you're gonna see so many video clips their whole life was on what was that what is it the um what is it the jim carrey movie it was the one where like his life is a movie right yeah the that? truman show Thank you. The Truman Show. It looks like the Truman Show from the outside because anything they ever did that was outside of the home was recorded on these cameras. So you see he and old Susan going out to like burn a heater on the driveway and you see like Anthony going out and getting in the garage and kind of going back in. Anything they do is all recorded no matter where they were. Their entire grounds was was covered with cameras. Um, so it's. It's tough. So I don't, him telling the cops that he didn't beat him means literally nothing to me. I, right. That doesn't phase me at all. I, I don't think that means that he didn't beat him. I think the kid was a complete isolated prisoner that's been beaten. You know what I mean? Like you, you can't go off of any kind of response at that point. So anyway, we'll just kind of start wrapping it up here. But, but stepbrother gets himself out of the home. And at some point, Susan gets some teeth like, knocked out. Poor, poor Anthony, man. Like everybody's just peacing out and just out. <laughs> fucking see Anthony. Good luck, brother. Yep. Good luck, dude. Yep. Stay and in so, your room. Keep your head down. Yeah. Good luck. Better seen than heard. Good luck. Deuces. So Peyton checks out. His dad picks him up. Eventually, uh, just a few, a little bit later, um, about it was a few months before the murder. Susan checks out. She got some teeth knocked out. She was done. She leaves. And when they say to her, "Why did you leave Anthony there? Why did you go?" She's the same exact thing that Anthony's biological mother said, which was, "Oh, I knew he'd kill me if I took Anthony, or I knew he'd kill us both if I took Anthony." 
Um, so that's where I say I know the psychological implications here are huge, and that's not to that's not to forget. We we have so to Anthony, that. like essentially what I'm gathering but from this is Anthony nobody was, protected this child. Anthony was just like, you know what, dude, fuck this guy. I'm gonna go get two revolvers and get to work. I don't know that I'm necessarily not okay with that. I dude, am. Fuck it, dude. If everybody I'm else, okay if everybody else abandoned him, let him get to work on that, dude. Uh, did he shoot him with both revolvers? Because I want to, I want to picture this as like a really good like a, like ending a, where he's like, like, a two, <laughs> like a lonesome dove, like a yeah, yeah. No, yeah, he like, didn't. I don't think he did. I think he used one. Like, uh, like he just watched. Uh, what's that movie, Boondock Saints? Oh, he watched God, Boondock God, Saints. Got all jacked up. That was yep. about the same time frame, 2001. That's when that movie came out. Somewhere around yeah, there. I don't. You Maybe know, I, don't, I lost my virginity. I don't. I lost the, my virginity to Boondock Saints. Again? I was watching. We were watching Boondock Saints, and um, that was it. I'm really? Just kidding. No, no. I, you know it. It was Passion of the Christ. Passion oh of the Christ. Jesus, Eric. So, I'm. This is my farewell show. Guys. So what happened? What happened to? What happened to? Um, so what? What happened to? Him? Does he go to jail? Does he go to? You know? Yep. So what happened was, um, so the his his uh, his lawyer actually grew up in not the same right but um murfag 30 she's a 10 but she throws out lonesome dove instead of tombstone <laughs> <laughs> i love tombstone too very different very different um so um his lawyer actually grew up uh, not nearly in, in this terrible of a situation, but also not in a great situation. And he was a vulnerable kid um, in, in his circumstances as well. And so he really took a, he took a liking to Anthony and felt a soft spot for him for sure. And uh, you'll see in the, in the documentary, as they talk about the case, the lawyer kind of, you know, he's kind of breaking down, he's tearing up. Um, so, they originally are going after um, at one point they're talking about secondary murder. There are a few things he goes into. Uh, he gets into a facility for about six months as they're awaiting trial. Um, and his lawyer finally is like, look, like I know you can't, you can't dismiss this case. Clearly right. he shot him. He called it. You can't dismiss it. I understand that, but we need to go for something less as they dove into his childhood a little bit more dove into their lives. Oh, yeah. before I forget real quick, Susan, after she left, um, do you guys know the next door app, right? Where you can kind of yeah. like keep track of what's going on around you. She, yeah. th I feel like this was an odd grab, but she released her like the restraining order and like 55 pages of documents, like documenting all of Bert's abuse toward her um, oh. on this next door app. And that got people talking and that like encouraged her to seek. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know. So th that's a weird kind of side of this. So when, um, the DA has now learned. I think that's what I was going to say. Once they've read all these transcripts or manuscripts from her, all of her records, anything else from all the years of uh, Bert's abuse, they kind of plead to to the to the DA to like, hey, this is not as cut and dry as it seems. Like this kid's not crazy. We have a psychiatrist who speaks on here. She was um, she seemed pretty. Um, well thought out. I enjoyed hearing what she had to say. And she was like, look, I found zero abnormal findings from him that were not outside of his abuse. So it's not like he had a mental illness. It's not like she could diagnose him with anything outside of obviously a PTSD type thing, but anything, anything he has is clearly from his abuse. It wasn't, um, she didn't think he had any underlying mental illness otherwise. So, oh. so eventually they were able to go back. Um, they were trying not to go to trial they were able to get the charge dropped down to negligent homicide um, with um, five years probation. It's a little, it's an interesting probation grounds, which I actually, I really kind of like this a lot. And so tell me if you disagree for any reason though, for sure. But this isn't really the norm, but he was put on probation for five years under the conditions that he um, gets his GED, remember, guys, he never went to school ever, mm -hmm. so that he gets his GED, um, he does have to wear an ankle monitor. I guess he's probably used to something like that. But um, yeah. 
And then he has to um, he has to go to counseling during this five years, the entire time. Okay. And then he either has to get and maintain a job or continue his education. And at the end of the five years, if he's upheld all of these things, um, he will be out of parole. And then once um, I forget, not much time has to go by and it can actually be expunged from his record. Perfect. I'm done with yeah. all of that. Maybe I'm a 2000, all of it too. 2000 word essay explaining how he's going to be a better parent when he gets older and not make the same mistakes. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I just, just I just think that I think this is a time when the justice, everyone else in his life failed him. Yeah. But in this moment, when well, we talk so, about the justice the system failing people, got right. they got it right. And not only did they get it right, they they went the they went the grab to, you know, the, the you're going to get your education. You're going to get a job. Well, you're no. going to go to counseling, like all the things that are going to matter for this kid to be to have any any shot at all moving forward. Right. So but here's the catch. And this is this is the end. But. The catch for me is that so they, the documentary does go on to say he he does travel to Texas to, quote, meet his mother, his biological mother. Once mm-hmm. he sees her, he you get a scene of um, he beats her. She's very she, she's very nervous. A um, lot of tears. But when she sees him, she realized there's one point when she said this is harder than losing him because she realized that they don't have a relationship and she knows that she can't just talk to him. Like he knows her. He's been through all these things. And I mean, obviously he knows. And she fucking left him. She left him and the mom let him go. I know it's so the mom was there. Um, the grandmother, she did, she did break down at one point and she cried and she just said, I'm so sorry for what happened and and whatever. But that was a, that was a tough scene to be fair. It was tough. He, she starts showing him pictures and his, he starts remembering things when she's showing him pictures. And she said, I can't believe you remember that. And he was like, Oh wait, that was here. Or that was this person. And, Mm. and it's just, it's tough to watch. I mean, I'll be honest, like toward the end of the show, I was, I was definitely tearing up. I had some, some sniffles going on. And so the, but the people who greet him as he leaves the facility where he was being held are his stepbrother, which he's, he's the one person probably I could say I could not blame it. He was a minor at this point as well. Right, 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 right. Um, and Susan, the stepmom, uh. and she wants to raise him and, and she's so thankful that he's out. And I, and they touch on this in the show. In fact, this was the verbiage was that after everything that happened, it took no one wanted to be there for this child until he killed this he's, man. Right. And then it's like a David and Goliath. Like then now he kills the man and now they're all like, oh, here, we, here we are, you know, we're all yeah. together now. So I, I'm glad that he at least has people there, I guess, now. I don't, I don't know. Too little, too late. What, think of it what you will. But um, Some people are just brought up in a fucking shitty situation, man. It's like the Dennis Perkins case that we covered a long time ago. Like, I don't know who his 12-year-old daughter is, but she's got to have one of the worst upbringings of all time. Yeah. I mean, Dennis Perkins. And his wife were like two of the most disgusting human beings on the planet. Oh, and I can't that the imagine. Sperm cupcakes. Yeah, yeah. Um, like hundred and was one hundred and thirty-one counts of sexual assault and abuse um, mm-hmm. on children under twelve years old. Crazy case. One of the most disgusting cases. Again, that really didn't get a lot of until the lot of press. Because that just sounded more. Salacious. Well, I mean, but it barely. But it yeah. But nobody. It, that was like a New York. That was like a uh, New York Post. It wasn't even like, you know, like a real good news source. Like, I don't think it was on like CNN or Fox or anything or, you know, any of the mainstream, well, you know, the major mainstream, I guess you would say. But um, no, I mean, listen, this is a, this is a crazy case. And, and, and it brings up a, you know, an, an important note that uh, if you're in an, an abusive relationship, start working on a way to get out of it. Talk yeah. to somebody, um, you know, and, and if you know somebody that's in an abusive relationship or if you've been questioning it, you know, don't sit back and wait for them to have to fucking murder somebody. Um, you know, do something about it. Uh, if you want to support the show, guys, head over and grab some of the merch. There's a couple of new shirts. I only got a picture of one of them up here, but there's a black shirt that's really cool, 80s retro. Um, and then she's got a brown one out. This is all from the Andrea Uplate collection over on a Corning Stone herself. Also, don't forget, come visit us. Uh, come see us at the live meet and greet in Wilmington at Rocco Cigar Bar and come hang out with us that evening. And Go and follow Andrea up late. Let's get her to a thousand. As soon as she gets to a thousand, she's got to call me master. She's I don't got to buy Lasro Lopez. Rules. The rules were by tonight. She's got to buy Lasro Lopez. Hey, better seen than heard. Okay. Not in my house. Daddy makes the rules in my house. Go to your room. 
Uh, I'm just kidding. She'll call me master. She'll buy Lasso Lopez a jet ski. She'll buy Sarah Kelch a karaoke machine. What will she do for you if she gets to a thousand Instagram uh, followers? I don't know. I don't know. Put it on your Instagram. Let us know what she agreed to give you if she gets a thousand followers. Um, anything else to close us out? No, 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 no. But I liked all their ideas today. I got a lot of fun. Um, yeah. Fun. Yeah. 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 Okay. It's fun stuff. All right. Fun stuff, right. a lot of engagement, uh, but yeah, you guys just um, definitely look at the merch store. It's fun. They've got a ton of stuff. I think you previewed a sweatshirt for the winter too, right? Uh, yeah, working on a winter one. Uh, I don't know. Well, you might not I, have put I, it up yet. I don't think I put it up yet. I, I don't know. Uh, so but much no, going else, on in the some, LBC. Yeah, yeah. Like All it, right. guys. Well, like our stuff. We'll so we can see keep you guys. Uh, what is that? That's the, the 26th is next the 26th, Friday. 26th, right? yeah. Come see us. It's, well, yeah, next Friday. It's yep. not this Friday. It's next Friday. Correct. Ah, man. See you live and in person. Got to bring you a new microphone so you'll quit. So you'll quit bitching. I said, if you clean up your act, if you act like a podcaster, if you dress like a podcaster, I'll get you a new mic. So you're making all the right steps. Cleaning Giant. it up. One Putting foot in front of the other. On it. Cool. All right, guys. Hey, from Night Shift, this is. Ron Burgundy. No, this is Andrea Uplate and Eric Tanzi. <laughs> Until next time, cheers. Good night, y'all.